again. Please, let's be a normal field trip. With Frazzle? No way! Uh -uh. Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxing, feeling good. Yeah! Next thing that you know you're seeing. A bitch being hung in Salem? Miss Frazzle? Welcome to 1938. Well, at my old school, we didn't travel back in time. Wait, what the fuck? How is that even possible? This isn't the first time we've been in the magic school bus and now you start to question our field tricks. I mean, yeah, but we usually go to like a different country in the present, not go back in time to important historical events that literally impact the present day. Like, how is nobody questioning their existence right now? For our safety, the Magic Wonk Bus has given us temporary invisibility ponchos where the outside world cannot hear or see us to prevent any consequences to the events in the future. Come on, children, put on your invisibility ponchos. <laughs> Let's talk about today's lesson. For this field trip, we are going to observe the Dyes Committee hearings. As we discussed earlier, the Federal Theater Project was created to help support the arts during the Great Depression and provided productions that were subsidized by the government where people with different economic classes were able to see theater, most for the first time. Whoa. I never heard about that before when I heard about the history of the Great Depression. So why was the Federal Theater Project so important anyway? Like, yeah, they produced plays and all, but that doesn't change anything. Well, it definitely did change something. Many shows under the Federal Theater Project were considered a part of the radical theater movement. Hallie Flanagan, the director of the FTP, helped produce plays that talked about current events and controversial issues of that time. There was racial integration on stage, plays with pro-union themes, and many more topics that were considered radical for its time. Due to this, the FTP faced a lot of disapproval from government institutions, creating challenges of censorship. I brought you all here to 1938 because Martin Dyes, the chairman of the Special House Committee for Investigation of Un-American Activities, declared an investigation into the Federal Theater Project, accusing them of communist propaganda. We are going to witness Hallie Flanagan defend the Federal Theater Project and its rights to exercise their artistic freedom. I want you to ask yourself during today's class, can subsidized theater truly be censorship free? How have you seen examples of censorship and abuse of power in our political climate back in 2020? Just keep that in the back of your mind. Let's go. <laughs> Before we begin, it is important to note that the actual hearing takes months. So we are just going to skip all the boring talk and get to the examples that I want to demonstrate in class today. Let's begin with the testimony of Hallie Flanagan, who is the head director of the Federal Theater Project. Observe this exchange. What are your thoughts on it? Will you please state what your position is, Ms. Flanagan? I am National Director of the Federal Theater Project under the Works Progress Administration. Since the inception of the project on August 29th, 1935, I have been concerned with combating un-American inactivity. Did they just make up a word? Un-American? Like I refer to the inactivity of professional men and women, people who were in the relief roles, and it was my job to expend the appropriation laid aside by congressional vote for the relief of the unemployed as it related to the field of the theater and to set up projects wherever in any city 25 or more of such professionals. Mr. Chairman, I think it is of great importance that we know something about her history, and that goes in the record, where she went to college and so forth. 
we're gonna get to that, but I wanted to give her an opportunity. I believe you said you're in charge of all of these activities? Yes, thank you. May I add to that fact that the project is national in scope in any place where there were a sufficient number of qualified relief applicants. I wanted to say that gentlemen as a background for the project. What was the primary purpose of setting up this federal theater project? The primary purpose was to put back to work the unemployed professional people, to put them back to work and rehabilitate them and conserve their skills. That was then and has always been the prime purpose of the theater project. Wow, that's impressive. You have had some experience in Radcliffe or in Chicago? I took my master's degree in Radcliffe. And that was in what year? That was in 1923. I became a production assistant to Professor Baker, who was at the time in charge of 47 workshops and assisted in the production of plays. Your work at Vassar has been in the experimental field. It has been in the Department of English. I was professor of English and in charge of the experimental theater. You are the first woman in America to receive the Guggenheim Foundation Scholarship. Is that wow, correct? Wow, we got an educated independent woman yes, over here. Correct. You went abroad for 12 or 14 months to study the theater. I did in 1926 and 1927 in Russia. In Russia. Was the statement true in the New York Daily Times of September 22nd, 1935, in which you said that the Continental Theater was tiresome and boresome matter, but the Russian theater was a live and vital theater? Congressman Starnes, that remark is so casually given that I could not identify it. I have here in my brief a statement of the countries visited, of the record. How much time did you spend in Russia, Mrs. Flanagan? I spent two months and a half in Russia out of the 14 months. But let me say, gentlemen, that... Did you spend more time there studying the theater than you did in any other country? Shut up! Let her speak! I did, because there are many more theaters in Russia than there are in any other country. What is it about the Russian theater that makes it more vital and important than the theater of the continent, the theater of the United he States? He keeps interrupting her and asking her new questions. I would be glad her to off on that, purpose. But I would like to say that this is the first time that I have had occasion to answer that question. I have maintained consistently that we are starting an American theater, which must be founded on American principles, which has nothing to do with the Russian theater. I know. But you are not answering the question, Mrs. Flanagan. Oh. The Russians, if we are to go into this discourse here, are very gifted people. They are temperamentally equipped for the stage. They have had a long and exciting history of theatrical development. And I found a great variety of Russian productions extremely interesting. For instance, I went to their ballet a great deal. They gave a beautiful ballet based on fairy tales. They have a great many. Hell, those fairy tales have a very little moral to them, don't they? In the ballet, that is not true. We are talking about the theater. Let us stay with Did the he theater. just gaslight her? In the theater, I saw a great many classics, and I saw a great many plays that advocated the Soviet form of government. I was concerned and had been sent by the Guggenheim Foundation to make a comparative study of the tendencies. That is not answering the, the question. The fucking audacity of this man! I think the witness ought to be allowed to finish her answer! I think the witness's answer should be responsive to my question. You are interrupting her all the time. I would like to hear what the witness has to say. Go ahead. The Guggenheim Foundation had sent me to make a study of the comparative tendencies on play production in some 12 European countries. The record of that trip is embodied in a book called Shifting Scenes, and I have here the clippings from all over the world and from every leading paper in the United States on that book. And I can only say, gentlemen, that not one newspaper critic, when that book came out in 1927, picked out anything that was subversive or un-American. Would you like to have me read quotations from the press clippings? No because th that, that is not responsive to my question. I want to say this to the gentleman on the committee and to the witness. I have no disposition to interrupt the witness in answering questions, provided the answers are responsive to my questions. I appreciate that. 
But when it is not responsive to the questions, I reserve the privilege of calling the witness's attention to that fact and asking her to answer my question. Yes, but she was answering several questions and you, in you interrupted the witness when you didn't like the answer. I would like to hear what the answer is. I would like to also, if it is responsive. Wow, this is hilarious. Part of the witness's statement was responsive, and part was absolutely not. The witness makes her statement, and you don't let her finish it. You interrupt her, and I object to that. Let us proceed now. <clears throat> now, Mrs. Flanagan, would you go back to this question again of un-American communistic activities on the Federal Theater Project. I have never seen such literature distributed. I have never seen such notices on bulletin boards. In other words, if such has been done, it has been done without your knowledge and without your consent. That is absolutely true. All right. Now, you were speaking of Russian theater a moment ago. Do you believe the theater is a weapon? I believe that the theater is a great educational force. The Russians use it as a means of teaching class consciousness, do they not? Aw, Congressman, are you scared of theater? I should say that was you're the main scared that theater. theater was going to destroy America? Every play are you afraid the commies are gonna come after you in a song American. and dance? Mm -hmm. Yes. And they use the system of selling Block groups of seats at a reduced price to the working classes. Is that oh, right? Oh no! The Russians are attacking us with discounted tickets. That has been done. Not like Russia, federal theater Germany, project's and whole France. plan was to make theater you more make accessible. You mention of the fact in your own book, shifting scenes of the struggle. I was reporting, Mr. Starnes, on the Russian theater. <laughs> That is the purpose it's of, of order. the order. He clearly said that she was reporting. I think it is and a very nothing to do with the FTP. What in Russia. She explained right. the reason her book a while ago. Let me read. I will call the page. <clears throat> this is on page one fourteen, beginning at the He's second. He's still paragraph. going. Let me it's a you fucking to article she wrote in college. No reports. Not oh, an op-ed. God, no, Mr. Congressman Starnes, I don't see any need of that. I am quoting an article in which you said the theater was a weapon for teaching class consciousness. I think you are referring to it as a piece of reporting, Congressman Starnes. And I would like to turn to the place in my own brief where I have mentioned that. May you I go, so? girl. Woo! Yes. This is on page 19 of my brief. Mrs. Huffman alleged that I assisted in setting up this workers' theater. She attributes to me the calling together of the various organizations. This is completely untrue. I was in no way connected with the setting up of these workers' theaters. That article is Ms. Huffman's, not mine. You wrote for the Theater Arts Monthly of November 1931, did you not? That is the article I have just been quoting. I was reporting for the Theater Arts Monthly on a very important, important theatrical movement of workers throughout America. It has nothing to do with the Federal Theater. Yes, bitch, I have you tell nothing that to do with the workers' theaters. I was teaching at Vassar College. Yes, but this is an article headed, A Theater is Born by Hallie Flanagan. Exactly, but the theater was not born through me, Mr. Starnes. And Flanagan is a that savage! Is the point I am making is this- Mr. Starnes, I quite understand. Let us not get into a controversy over this because it is so simple. Oh, shit! At that time in 1931, oh, the workers' theaters were being set up in mines and schools and all sorts of places in America. The Theater Arts Monthly asked me if I would go to this meeting and report on it. If you will read on a little bit further, you will see that it describes a meeting of some of these workers' theaters. That is a report of the setting up of this workers' theater. That is your theory. That is an expression of your belief about the new theater of America. More than a theory, Congressman Starnes. It was an actual fact. Now there is another statement you have made here that some of the plays that were put out by the Federal Theater Project are propagandistic. The testimony is that only 26 were in question. Let us confine ourselves to those. I would like to say that I could not say that we never did a propaganda play. Propaganda, after all, is education. 
For example, some of you gentlemen have doubtless seen One Third of a Nation, and I certainly would not sit here and say that that was not a propaganda play. I should like to say very truthfully that to the best of my knowledge, we have never done a play which was propaganda for democracy. Propaganda for better housing. What do you mean by that? Propaganda for what forms of democracy and what particular things? Like housing, as you just mentioned? Yes. Shall we go into a discussion of democracy? Just name some of the things that the Federal Theater Project has put out propaganda plays for. Yes, well, one third of a nation, in that the definite propaganda was for better housing for American citizens. The living newspaper would be propaganda for... We're not answering the question. They're doing that interrupting. You're not answering the question. Bullshit How about again. power? Yes, I would say that power was propaganda for a better understanding of power and its wide use. How about injunction granted? Injunction granted is propaganda for fair labor relations and for fairness to labor in the courts. Play was an attack against our present system of courts, wasn't it? No. I should say that that play was a definite historical study of the history of the labor in the courts. Don't you believe that it does attack the present system of the courts? I do not believe that it fosters class hatred. All right. But you've said in article after article that these theaters in America must stress class consciousness. Isn't that right? I am asking you if you haven't advocated that. I do not. Do you advocate it or do you not? Dude, she just said she didn't advocate it. I do not. You do not. You do not believe that plays in America should have the social significance that you say the plays of Russia should You manipulative son of a bitch! Now you are using another of those polite phrases that I thought you barred out yesterday. When I say that a play is socially conscious, I mean that it has something to do with the world today. It is a changing world and the theater must change with it, Congressman, if it is to be any good. Miss Frazzle, is she talking about censorship? That is right. I believe People so. People have got to change. That is true. That is all I have to ask, Mr. Chairman. Ugh, finally! Oh no, well, I guess we are low on time. We must leave before our visibility cloaks expire. Oh, Miss Frazzle, I want to see what happens. Well, do you want to die? What? If we don't get to the bus soon, we will be exposed and we will disrupt the space-time continuum. Just don't question me, Wendy. Students, follow me. Now that we have safely arrived back to our classroom, what are some key takeaways that you have gotten out of today's field trip? That men are trash. Would you like to elaborate on that, Patty? I mean, they just kept interrupting her and focusing on her education as a threat. It was as if they were trying to silence her. Hallie Flanagan was not performing the version of femininity the committee had demanded, and they tried to talk down to her as if she didn't know anything, just because she was prepared and stood her ground. Yes, you could say that the Dyes Committee felt emasculated by women such as Flanagan. Is that so? Yes, you could just feel the toxic masculinity in that room. Great observation, Patty. Anyone else? Yes, Arnie. What was most apparent was that the Dias Committee demonstrated how uneducated they were when it came to theater. More than once, a member has stated that they had never seen or read a play that they were so passionately against just because of their assumptions on it. How can you make a valid argument if you haven't even done the work? Also, you can tell that they were so offended by the idea that some of these plays were teaching about class consciousness it's as if they want to prevent artists from creating content that will educate people. Exactly, Wendy. It's funny because the Broadway shows today are teaching jack shit. There is no original work anymore. Preach. All of the shows this past season are just cash-grabbing movie adaptations sponsored by corporations. The whole point of theater is to challenge the status quo, but how can we bring the heart of experimental theater when we're competing with a production budget of Spongebob the Musical? 
Broadway is too scared to put out anything radical because it won't appeal to the masses. What does that mean for the future of theater if it's only going to become singing and dancing advertisements? And with digital streaming content and live theater being overpriced, the industry has no choice but to think about money. Hell, I mean, most programs are defunded at the educational and nonprofit level all have to do with the arts. It just shows our capitalist society does not value it or inspire others to create it. At this point, art is dead. I understand your point, Patty, but the fact that you have these concerns and are able to think critically of the world around you is important in today's lesson. What do you mean? I mean, our world needs more people who are not afraid to criticize the ways that certain issues institutions fail to address. Today's class was meant not only on censorship, but most importantly, be inspired by Hallie Flanagan's drive to change theater as a whole. Yes, the Federal Theater Project did not last long, but it left an impact onto makers everywhere that art can make a difference. The fact that living newspapers' productions disrupted the government in itself is an accomplishment. Their obsession with Hallie Flanagan demonstrates that they felt threatened by her goals. The Federal Theater Project's success to incorporate audiences of different classes and produce radical work threatened the committee's traditional American capitalist values. They were afraid of her influence on American citizens to challenge authority because they want to remain in control. Hallie Flanagan and the Federal Theater Project prove that art can make a difference. Art is not dead, as long as we have people who refuse to adhere to conformity. <laughs> Everyone.